Hi, I'm Maria Dancing Hart, the author of The Last Adventure of Life, an inspirational resource book for end-of-life care. And I've done bereavement and spiritual counseling with hospice for many years. And some people say this book is a wonderful introduction to hospice. Some people ask me if I have encountered any mystical experiences through my hospice. And I love that question because, yes, of course, I've experienced many, many mystical experiences through hospice work. In fact, one of the mottos I like to refer to is, uh, there is so much more than meets the eye. There is really so much more than meets the eye in this world. We, what we see and can touch and feel is only a tip of the iceberg, you know. But um, one story that comes to mind is when I went in to visit a gentleman who was maybe two or three weeks close to dying. And after we had engaged in conversation for a few minutes, he asked me, who was that woman who came in with you? And I was at a loss for words because I was not aware of anyone else who had come into the room with him or with me. But I uh, concluded that there must have been some kind of being, some angelic being or perhaps his spirit guide who came in with me to make their appearance to him. And for whatever reason, they must have uh, decided that that was a good time to connect with him. And then another story I remember is from when I visited a young man. He was only 50, a wonderful man who had a heart con uh, condition. And he said that many times during his life, he knew he was fine, but people around him were concerned that he was dying. Well, this time he knew he was dying, and that's why he had come on to our hospice. And after he and I had several visits, he did die. He was very close to his death. And he was very inspirational to talk with. And one of the things he told me about was that he and his wife had visited a person who could read spiritual energy off of a person and had given them some wonderful advice before he died. He had had a wonderfully um, laughing and uh, humorous time with his guides, whereas his wife had had a very somber time and kind of a time of grief and tears with her um, guides because they were telling her that indeed it was his time and that she must get herself ready for letting him go. Well, after he died, I went to this same woman who they had gone to for spiritual advice, if you will, or, or spiritual reading. It was my birthday time and I thought I would treat myself to something new, you know, and I was wondering what would, what would come of this. Well, as soon as we got into the session, the gentleman who had just died came through and he shared that uh, he was very grateful for the bereavement work that I was doing with his wife. And indeed, I had been uh, visiting her and offering her comfort. And the next thing he did was to share with me some spiritual advice he had for a situation I had with a colleague that was a little bit difficult. So I was very grateful to receive this, this insight. And then the handwriting, the, the woman was doing automatic writing. The handwriting of the woman changed. And this time, it was clear that my mother was coming through. Well, my mother had died about six or seven years ago. And her first comment was something like, long time no talk or long time no see. And I got rather emotional, you know, thinking that here was my mother, who, who I had sensed and seen in my dreams, but I had never had direct contact like that with her. And the next thing the, the gal said, who was doing the reading, she said, I'm getting something about a miscarriage. This is rather personal, but have you ever had a miscarriage? And I said, no. But I said, I remember that my mother had a miscarriage much later in life. We were three girls, and then she had had a miscarriage. And she had told us about it. So she, then the gal said, okay, let's go with that. Well, the next thing she wrote was, I've met my son. I've met my son on the other side. And she proceeded to explain that those who try to make it in or, or 
attempt to come in and don't make it, either through a miscarriage or an abortion or however that might happen, they continue to grow and to uh, evolve on the other side, kind of as if, in a parallel way, as if they had been born. And then she proceeded to share what my brother looked like and what his name was and the fact that he was one of my bereavement guides. And you know, from that day on, something really shifted in me because I, I had always sensed that through hospice work especially, that there was so much more than meets the eye. But then to learn that my own unborn brother was one of my guides and with me, you know, on a regular basis, this was profound and uh, this totally changed my life and truly made me a believer in the fact that there is yet so much to be explored in this world.